Hey guys, today I'll be showing another little project I'm going to be working on. And this is a personal project, so it's only going to happen on like the weekends and that kind of stuff. But uh, this is a mini Moog I bought probably about three years ago off eBay before everything went really crazy in price. And uh, sadly, it's probably one of the worst mini Moogs I've ever had. Um, and I'll show you kind of why. So you can see the delamination, you know, that doesn't look too bad, but it's been crushed. You can see up here where it has taken a hit and everything got folded in and it's warped everything up. I mean, everything is warped. Um, it looks like it's just this area, but when you actually mount this thing to a cabinet, you can't get the hinge to move because it's just it's so it's so bound up from the from the warp. Um, but it's a it's a cool mini moak and I took a chance when I bought it. I bought it in this condition. This is how I bought it. It did have a cabinet when I got it. But the cabinet was busted up as well, just from the impact of the of the whatever got dropped on it or something. I don't really know quite what happened to it. I know it's it's pretty severe. Um, I kind of took a chance and I bought it, and I didn't pay that much for it. And uh, of course, when I got it, it didn't really play that well. It had some issues with it, but you can hear it actually does play great. And it has a great tone. <laughs> So it sounds great. It's a 73 Mini Moog, so it's got the RA Moog circuit boards in it and all that good stuff. But uh, I'll kind of show you what we're looking at here. Now, I do have to say, I don't, I don't know much about this Mini Moog's history, but I have a feeling it was probably stolen at some point because you can see where the serial number would have been up here on this uh, label. And you can see where it was cut off right here and somebody had actually tried to scratch out the serial number. And then when I got it, it, this was actually had stickers all over it. So there's actually stickers on top of this, which is kind of red flag that it may be stolen when I pulled them off and saw that the seal number was uh, was etched out like that. But it's uh, seal number 3344 for those that may be curious. If you lost your, your mini Moog and it was seal number 3344, then here it is. This is, this is it. Um, but I, I bought it uh, from a pawn shop. I forgot where it came from. I can't. It's been about three years. And I, I just don't remember. But it's got this cool sticker on the back. It's got the uh, the Moog authorized performer sticker on the back, and just a really cool sticker there. Of course, this is dented up as well. You can see it. It took a hard lick here. But this is actually fixable. I can fix this back panel. But that is pretty severe. It's a uh, pretty bad but you can see the 73 mini mode it's got the metal backed overlay as I've mentioned many a times and you can see how it just curled it too it just everything's warped so it's pretty bad but that brings me up to what my plan is for this one so some of you guys I know have seen this mini mode over the years laying around I've I bought this one back in like 20 I'm gonna say probably about 2011 so when I bought this in 2012 somewhere around there and I bought it as you see it. It's a, it's just a chassis. It's rough. And I did get it working at one point in time. It did come with circuit boards and everything. And I did have it up and playing, but it just never was good. It's, it's been just abused heavily. But you can see I had to actually rewire the harness. Somebody had cut the harness all back here. And I mean, it was just a mess. I had to go retrace everything, wire these in. Of course, they're not wired cleanly. Just trying to get it to work. And then the big thing is, I didn't realize at the time, so I put new connectors on it because the connectors were missing. So I had to actually just cut all the harness and everything. And it's too short. So when I rebuilt the LHC and everything, too short. And the harness is just a mess. And of course, over the years, I've had to steal some pots and stuff out of it for clients, you know, that had a bad pot. So I'd use this as a donor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chassis here, which is a 74 mini Moog. And uh, I'm going to take it and actually uh, take this one, the 73, and this one and make a really, really nice Mini Moog. That's my, my intention. But you can see I don't have an interface on it. So I went as far as to actually, uh, for some odd reason, they, they installed these rivets. And they were too large. They're, they're not the right kind of rivet. And so they ground them down trying to make the interface fit over it. Well, of course, it still sticks up too high, so your interface never lays flat. So it's just a mess. I mean, this Mini Moog is just a complete mess. But between the two, I can make a really nice Mini Moog. I'm going to set this one back up to like a factory setting as far as the build, you know, the specs of the rivets and that kind of stuff. 
But uh, this was actually a cylinder, uh, let's see, uh, that's 5372 is when this, this is the cylinder of this one. And I think it was made in August of 74, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's when it was made. Uh, I don't really remember. It may still be in there. Let's see if it is. Yeah, 8 16 74 is when this one was made. So, eight, so August 16th, 1974 is when this one was actually manufactured. But you can see just how rough it is. But once again, there is going to be some design changes between them because this is 73. It doesn't have the uh, voltage selector switch where you can see on this one it has the slot and the voltage selector switch for your transformer. So it will have the voltage selector switch, but it's going to have all the guts out of this one. And of course, it don't have the buffer board, so this one's got the buffer board. So I'm going to reuse the buffer board with the harness of this mini Moog. Just keep everything really clean. I'm just going to try to keep everything as clean as I can here. But this one does still have the RE Moog circuit boards, as mentioned, and uh, going to service everything real good. But thought you guys might enjoy seeing this mini Moog project here. And I've actually got a West Taggart cabinet that this one will be going in once I do the transfers of chassis and get it like I want it. So it's going to be a really, really nice mini Moog uh, once complete. But anyways, I'll have you guys some updates as I go along in this thing. So here's just a quick look inside this mini Moog. Uh, I pulled just the oscillator board and the uh, VCF board here. But you can see it is the RA Moog incorporated boards. You got the uh, CTS uh, trim pot there for your scale. And uh, later in 74, that become a rheostat. So it would actually be made into the board, and it'd be a, one of these rheostats like you see here. But uh, you can kind of just see the oscillator board, version 2 oscillator board. And then here's the inside. So you can see this is the keyboard circuit board. This is the one actually when I bought it, I was kind of, I just took a gamble because I wasn't sure how the boards were going to look. But you can see that it actually bent right there. So our standoff is untouched, believe it or not. So this board did not get damaged from the from the impact. But you can just see, I mean, it is. You can just see the warp in it, and uh, of course that energy transferred to the front here. It goes all the way down. Everything's just warped. I mean, like I say, this hinge it only moves so far because it's actually got kind of a. If you look at it from the side, you can see it's actually kind of, kind of got like a buckle in it. I don't know if you can really see it there or not kind of see it. It isn't too severe, but it's definitely got a bend in it. And so it makes everything, un you know, it doesn't line up in a chassis either. That's the other problem. But it's such a shame. You can tell somebody took good care of this Mini Moog um, before this accident, whatever happened. I mean, like I say, I don't know its history. But um, you can definitely tell somebody took good care of this unit. It's really clean inside. The boards are in really nice shape. They've never been serviced, but they're, you know, they're definitely in, in good shape. Um, but you can also see here all the writing in this one. So this one was actually uh, tested on 10 1973 it looks like. Uh, that's when that was tested. That's kind of odd. They test it there. I guess that was just a final final test before they put the back cover on. Um, but we got initials MK. That might be Matt Christover. I don't know if that's uh, his initials or not. He was a guy that worked at Moog for a short time. Uh, JB and then uh, 102373, there's our serial number 3344, and then uh, once again 102373, and uh, I don't know what those last numbers are, it's like 12212 or something like that, not sure what that is, or 22, I don't know, can't really make that out. Once again down there you can see another date, 102373, and if we go back here, this is how I know the serial number is exactly 3344. We've still got this piece of uh, Norlin QA uh, tag on it. And you can see there it says 10-23-73 for inspection. So it's probably tested and inspected on the same day. Let's put my guess there. It's like there's an EB assembly. Uh, EB is the initials put on the assembly there. But yeah, it's just such a shame. You know, it's, it's a, a shame that this memo ended up like it did. But... Uh, you know, I'm just glad I got a chassis that we can use as well. So this is going to be a great Mini Moog again. It's just not going to be in the original chassis. What I may try to do is document all this and just put, you know, put it inside the chassis with, with the boards and everything. So we can kind of at least kind of keep, you know, the serial number reference and everything with the boards because it, it would be basically it's going to be a 73 Mini Moog and a 74 chassis is what it's going to be. 
All right, I don't get all the boards out of here. I just want to show you how curled this thing is. So we got the top piece, which you could see earlier, but now we've actually got it to where you can see just how warped this chassis is. So you can see this part here actually even set sideways. And as it goes down, it just continues on down all the way to the bottom of the chassis in this wave effect it has just from the impact. Uh, the energy was just transferred throughout the whole chassis. Just kind of like a car wreck, you know. Nothing straight after a car wreck, really. But um, it's just pretty crazy to see just how much offset everything is. Like this set's higher than the other two just because it was pushed in right there. And uh, it's just really crazy. Something else I want to show you too right quick though. Talking about Mini Moog history. Now I brought this up in a Facebook group before. It's been several years ago now. Somebody was asking about how you remove the switches. And I'd mentioned that it depends on what era Minimog you have. <clears throat> so if you have a really early Minimog, it's a little bit more tricky if you have to replace just a switch. And uh, I don't think they really believed what I, what I told them. Because I wrote it on there and they're like, ah, oh, that ain't true. Well, I'm going to prove it is. And this is also part of Moog history. So these switches, you can see in this chassis, they do not have a, a nut or a lock washer behind them. They're actually threaded into the switch. That's how these switches are held in. Now a lot of the early Mini Moogs are like this, 73 back. Um, when you get into 74 though, you see that they actually start putting a nut in a lock washer. So you could actually take this nut off and you could pull the switch. In this case, you actually have a, a screw head in the front. So the only way you're going to be able to pull one of these switches here is if you remove the front interface panel and go in the front and, and take the screws out. And so it's kind of a nuisance. So that's why they went to a a, uh, a screw with a nut and lock, lock washer. Now if you look at the front of this one, you'll see it's actually machined into the chassis. It's not actually a screw anymore. So it's actually machined into the chassis right here. And so it's actually made into this front interface. So you don't have to worry about this thing backing out on you. You just take that nut that nut off and that lock washer off and you can actually replace the switch if necessary. So just a little bit more trivia stuff for you guys that, that are into Mini Moog history here. And of course I'll post that Mini Moog history video I made. I always mention the video I made of the Mini Moog history. I'll post it in the link to, in this video as well so you guys can go check that out. But uh, that was just something else I wanted to mention. I never have mentioned that. Um, but like I said, I did mention in a, fe in a uh, Facebook group uh, somebody's asking how to service their mini moog switches and I brought up some mini moogs don't have the the lock washers and nuts and it makes it a little bit more tricky. Alright, I've now got all the assembly out of the front of the chassis here and you can see just how complex this thing is. This is what you will not find in a reissue mini moog is all this hand wired harnesses and these Allen Bradley pots and all this kind of stuff. I think what they do in the new reissues they just make a, a PC board and all the pots are just, you know, uh, mounted through hole in the PC board. So pretty neat to look at something like this. It's actually all hand built. But that's the actual harness. Here's where our keyboard came out. I actually want to just clip to our connectors here because I will be resoldering those anyways. Uh, they were starting to fray at the connectors that needed that anyways. But just to give you an idea once again this is what it looks like behind the panel and this is what it looks like with everything removed off the panel. And then our, here's our panel down here. So uh, this is where you can see the big dent and it actually runs all the way over and it's just, it's just bowed. Like it's literally just bowed in all the way across there. But you can kind of see what this looks like. The only thing that's left in the chassis is the transformer right now and the jacks for the uh, accessories and also I got to finish removing this wire so I can get our uh, the 120 volt side fuse holder out of the chassis. But there's the inside of it. So yeah, you can see, once again, just how bowed that thing is. The camera it really doesn't do it justice. I mean, it is it's bowed crazy in there. And it's all warped up all the way down to the hinge. But you can see the hinged area here that flips. This is where you can service it. And uh, so yeah, anyways, I just thought you guys might like to see this thing all open up. Here's our interface. Uh, you can just see how bent it is. Yeah, you can see it's just absolutely bent all the way across. Once again, this is 73, so it's got the metal-backed interface here. So you can just kind of see how that looks. That may could be straightened out. I just don't think it ever look right. That's the problem. Because anytime I start, you know, hitting on it or anything, we're going to lose that embossed leather 
texture on this vinyl so it may not ever look right but I'm not gonna get rid of this stuff I'll, I'll do something with it um, actually I got some other boards I may turn this into a Frankenstein mini it may be something that's completely different from any mini mode that you guys have seen out there but anyways continue on alright guys making some progress here so this is the uh, 5372 serial number chassis. This is one that we're going to be transferring everything out of 3344 into. And uh, just getting everything cleaned up. Like I had mentioned earlier, the rivets had been replaced or something. And uh, they were sticking out so you couldn't get the interface panel to lay flat. Which is one reason I never use this chassis. So what I did, I went in there and I actually replaced some rivets because some of them weren't installed right. They were put in there but they were loose. So I just drilled those out, replaced them, and I ground them down. So now they're all flush against the chassis. And that's important because when we put the interface panel on, you don't want it to be lifted up by a rivet. So everything can lay flat against this uh, metal panel. So anyways, now I've ran into something I didn't even take in consideration because of early versus later mini mogs, And we've got an early mini mode going to a later chassis. So we've ran into some things here. But this also brings us right back to what I was talking about earlier about the switch mounting on early versus late mini modes. And this is a, a prime example of what I was talking about and I didn't even take it take this in consideration. So as mentioned this is a, a later chassis you know, around 74 and you can see how the screws are actually machined into the chassis. There is no heads on these screws. They're, they're machined into the chassis. And that's where you get your threads. And what happens on this particular application is you have the switch that slides over these uh, threads on the back and they're held in with a uh, star locking washer and a nut. That's what holds your switch in. Okay. Well, guess what? On the earlier units, it don't work that way. On the earlier units, all you have is you have the switch. It's got a threaded place in the switch, which I'll show you in a minute. And they're held in by a screw, which means and this is, I can see exactly why it would change this to this design. Because if a switch came loose, or you had to replace a switch, you had to pull the whole interface off so you could get to the head of the screw so you could loosen it and take the switch off. So quite a, a, a problem if you had a problem, you know, with your gigging with this thing and the switch broke. So now I've ran into a situation now where I've got two problems. One problem is I've got some of these broke off. So they broke off because they're for the standoffs of the keyboard circuit board. And uh, I'll show you kind of what it looks like here. So you can see there's your threads right there. There's all the threads sticking out. But we got some right here that are broken off, like you can see right there and right there. And these are important because they actually hold the keyboard circuit. So they actually mount here at the keyboard circuit at the top and hold all that in place. Now, one of the power supply ones was okay, but one of them was broken. So what I'm having to actually do and this has taken some doing because I, I wasn't sure how they were manufactured. I'm slowly learning that they're just machined in there. Is I had to actually drill out the machine screw and install. I actually had to take that out. I had to countersink the hole. And I'm using the hardware off the old Mini Moog to, to uh, install a screw to hold the standoffs in. Of course, I'm using Loctite. So once everything's in there, it'll be Loctited in. It won't come back out. But... Um, Anyways, that's what we've ran into. I'll show you here. This is the old chassis. This is the 3344 with the big dent in it right here, and it's all just warped up. But you can see exactly how that one looks. It's got the countersink holes, and so the screws would just fit into the hole, and then you put your switch in. Now, going to the harness. I've got the harness setting over here out of the way. So if we go here to the harness now and look at it, you can see that the switches actually do have threads. Let's see if I can zoom in here. So you can see those switches are threaded. So what that means is, is in order to make this harness work with these switches in this later chassis, I gotta drill out all the threads out of the, out of the switches. Not a big deal, I've done this before. But um, it, is a, it is gonna be quite a job for all the switches. So that is gonna be something that's gonna happen. And like I say, later Mini Moog, the harness I got out of this unit, I wish I had it in here, it's in the other room. Um, is actually you just got a hole so there's no threads in there so that's what would just fit over that thread and you just put the lock washer and nut behind it. So anyways just something I'm learning as we go here that I've never been this deep into a mini mode gray store. I've taken things apart but it's always been with the same unit so now we're getting into a situation where we're taking 
a early mini Moog and a late mini Moog and kind of mashing everything together. So it's he's bringing out even more changes that I haven't even brought up in the in the past here. But uh, you can kind of see the harness here. This is it. I had to cut the connectors off. As mentioned, I think I mentioned this already. I've got those off. I'm gonna re, you know clean all those up and get everything cleaned up really good because they were starting to break at the uh, solder joints anyway. So it's good to start with clean wire on this rebuild. All right. So some more updates here. So I've got this thing. I'll put back together. I got the harness from 3344 inside the 5372 chassis. Now, I hadn't done any updates as far as adding the buffer board. You can see it's still out of here. Uh, but I did just transfer everything over. I got the transformer. I even used the transformer out of the uh, 73 Mini Moog, 3340, uh, 3344. And I actually wired it so it's got the voltage selector switch like a 74. So the transformer already has dual uh, primaries. So either series or parallel them to make a uh, 115 to 230 volt uh, conversion. I believe it, in a uh, 115 volt there in parallel, and in uh, 150, uh, I'm sorry, in a 230, it's uh, series winding. So that's how that works. But you can see I've got everything back together. I've got our connectors back on it down here. So I got everything put back together there. New power cord, as you can see. Now what's really impressive when I flip this thing over, because I've got a special interface panel I bought years ago for this project. And uh, there's our new interface panel. Now what makes this interface panel different, because it's got a little dust on it, is actually anodized metal. So it's anodized with screen printing. So it looks really, really sharp. There's no texture to it, so it's like a 72 mini Moog, as far as the way it looks. Um, but it's just a real pretty pre-interface here. But you can see, still got some detailing to do to it, but I've got everything put back together as far as the, the uh, fuses and the harness, all that, and you can see how nice that looks. I did have to cut the uh, label back a little bit right here just to get that excess, that screw, because that was all loose and everything was just taken apart there. But you can see just how great it looks. Got to clean this other tape residue right here. That's from years ago whoever had this thing before me. But serial number 5372 with basically 3344 inside the cabinet. But I got it propped up there. You can actually see just how great that thing looks. So the next steps is I got to uh, test it out here. Alright guys, moment of truth. I got our boards back in this thing. I got it plugged in. Haven't powered it yet. We're going to see what it does here. Now I hadn't recapped. I hadn't done any maintenance to this unit. Uh, I just want to see how it works with the harness transfer. And like I say, I still have the buffer board or any of that stuff. We're just going to test out the harness, make sure it works. I've already just done some ohm testing to make sure, you know, continuity and that kind of stuff looks okay. We look good. I don't see any shorts. I don't see anything wrong. Uh, but we're going to just see what it does here. So let's walk around the front here. It's just a skeleton of a mini Moog. It doesn't have a chassis yet. But you can see how beautiful the interface looks. Just put a few knobs on it just so I could do some testing here once we get it powered up. But um, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see what this thing does. Always the nervous moment. <laughs> so it's powered up. Uh, I don't hear anything. Uh, let me. Oh, we do have something. some issues with switches there but hey it's it's working now that's fantastic this is the noise source works just out of curiosity it's like it's working yeah it's working so that noise source it looks like everything's working so far Jim 
dinner at work. It's like it's working. So the uh, loudest control works. I know this one has a control issue because if I bring this up and then bring up the sustain level. So I know it has a control issue there, circuit wise, but that was there before I did the harness transfer. Let's see if this. That does look like the loudness control is working. Yeah, okay. Well, it looks like we're making, making some good progress here. All right, this Mini Moog is way different than it was. Uh, as you can see, I've got it in the cabinet now. Now, I'm not done with it. Um, this is just, I've got everything kind of put back together because I got to move on to other projects. But uh, got this beautiful cabinet from West Taggart. And uh, absolutely fantastic. Hard to believe this was the Mini Moog that was all bent up. It really turned out great. Of course, the keyboard, you know, still got to rebuild everything there. I just kind of got it back together. The badge is just sitting on there. <laughs> so I don't even have it glued yet. Um, but you just kind of get an idea how beautiful this thing's going to look. Going to also do the delamination on the uh, left hand control there. It still needs all that. But wow, what a difference this mini mode is now compared to what what it was when we started. Of course, I still got to do some uh, metal work to this chassis. This is where it was dented up on the old chassis. So once again, 3344 is now living in 5372 metal chassis. So that's kind of how it works there. But you can see just how clean and nice. And I also got a rear badge for it that'll be going on it, but absolutely just beautiful. Beautiful cabinet here. New power cord, I got it kind of wrapped up there. But yeah, this is uh, way different than it was. But uh, just absolutely beautiful. Anyways, that's the adventure of this one. And uh, like I say, I'll make a, maybe a part two to this video, give you guys a final look at it uh, when I have everything finally done. Because uh, basically next week's starting and I've got to jump on some other projects here. But anyways, thanks for watching.